This film and this story is different because it's really grounded in reality. I don't understand what's happening. I think I'm seeing the future. By now, everyone seems to have seen Madam Web and the memes are already starting. It's most certainly been great for my channel, I'll tell you that. But the question still remains, how did Sony ever allow this disaster to ever see the light of day? Why did they think that this was a good idea? And what is leadership at both Sony and Disney thinking going forward? Strap in, dear viewer, because I'm taking you on the wild roller coaster ride that was the production of Madam Web. If it's your first time here, welcome. If it's your second time here, welcome back. If it's your third time, why don't you subscribe already? Otherwise, gather around, kids. It's storytelling time. The story began a decade ago, back in 2014. Sony deliberately leaked through Deadline Hollywood that they were developing something truly revolutionary and groundbreaking that the world had never before seen. A female-centric Spider-Man spin-off movie featuring an all-female superhero team. Now, a decade later, this revolutionary movie is actually here in the guise of Marvel's Madam Web. But by the looks of it, the only groundbreaking thing about it is how much both the audience and industry alike are already over the MCU and all its feminist glory. If there was ever a movie that missed its mark and came out way too late, it's Sony and Marvel's Madam Web. And that's saying something considering how long the development of the movie has taken. It's been going on since August of 2014. For context, that's right around the release of Captain America the Winter Soldier and the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. This is also long before the release of DC's first Wonder Woman movie and when Ike Perlmutter was firmly in control over at Marvel Studios and long before the MCU was ever even a sparkle in Kevin Feige's eyes. It was actually Amy Pascal who was the early explorer in finding demand where there was none. It was also Amy Pascal who facilitated Paul Feig in rebooting Ghostbusters with an all-female cast. After development of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Sony wanted to milk its IP down to the bone by making an Avengers-style team-up for the Sinister Six with each of these villains to get their own movie beforehand. Within all of this mess over at Sony, Amy Pascal had also pitched the idea for an all-female superhero team, all based on the existing Spider-Man franchise. But which characters would they pick? No one knew. So they went searching through the bottom of the barrel of the Spider-Man IP, looking for female characters, and this is who they came up with. Madam Web. The original Madam Web was Cassandra Webb, a clairvoyant and telepathic character who first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 210 in 1980. Cassandra Webb was an elderly woman who was connected to a life support system which enhanced her psychic abilities but left her physically frail. She often provided guidance and assistance to Spider-Man and other superheroes. Later, another character named Julia Carpenter took on the mantle of Madame Webb. Julia Carpenter was a former superhero known as Spider-Woman and had powers similar to Spider-Man's. After sustaining injuries in battle, she assumed the role of Madame Webb utilizing her psychic abilities to assist other superheroes. The character of Madame Web has appeared in various Spider-Man storylines over the years, playing roles as a mentor, advisor, and sometimes prophetic figure. Her character added depth and mystique to the Spider-Man comics lore, so why not adapt her into the MCU, Amy Pascal pondered. Now, just before I keep going down the Madame Web rabbit hole, I should note that there were several other ideas being tossed around, such as Silver Sable, Black Cat, Firestar, and Spider-Woman, to name a few. We know that Lisa Joy was hired to write the script and that Avi Arad were tossing around the other characters I mentioned. The reason that no one at Deadline knew which woman would be featured in this all-female team was that Sony themselves didn't know either. The mandate from Amy Pascal was that she wanted an all-female superhero team for this movie, nothing else. Well, then maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Fuck Indiana Jones! Put a chicken in it and make a name it gay! Which characters the film would focus on was a distant second or even third priority. The only thing that really mattered was that it had to be completely female-centric. Do you guys see now how diversity hires lead to bad outcomes? 
I'm honestly shocked that no one in Sony's decision-making pipeline pointed out the potential flaw in this business strategy at any point over the course of the movie's 10-year production cycle. The only thing they thought of was that someone will announce an all-female superhero team and time was of the essence for Sony to be the first out of the gate. Maybe there was a reason why no one had announced an all-female superhero team yet. Because it was a terrible idea! But just how terrible of an idea did it end up being? Well, let's have a look. I think I'm seeing the future. New York City is a whole new level of crazy these days. What do you want from me? New York City is a whole new level of crazy these days. By being first, they thought that they could capitalize not only on the changing appetite of moviegoers, but also appeal to this modern audience. We now know, through the diligent reporting by Matt Taibbi and the Twitter Files fiasco, was that bots on Twitter were driving the conversation towards this woke nonsense. So Amy Pascal, Sony, Disney, and Marvel were all chasing a phantom that didn't exist. They were so enthralled by the message that the Twitter bots were spreading that they didn't make use of basic common sense to see the demand was fictitious. And as I mentioned in my last video, Madam Web may be the catalyst that brings about change in the industry. Amazon and Sony already abandoned the female-centric Silk Spider Society TV series in lieu of a strategy shift toward male-centric storytelling. What no one at the time knew or seemed unable to foresee was that DEI initiatives would end up biting corporations in the ass in a big way. And Madam Web is precisely that big bite in Sony's ass. When Amy Pascal forced through Paul Feig's female-centric Ghostbusters movie, they had no idea what lay in store for them. They ended up losing over $70 million, which is a big chunk of change for a company the size of Sony. Ironically, one of the only studios that set this out was Sony after the audience collectively punched them in the face over Ghostbusters 2016. They had quite literally jumped the shark. By trying to be the first to debut an all-female superhero team, they became the first studio to be punched in the face. You know, I'd be willing to bet that at least one person over at Disney besides Nelson Peltz is rethinking the idea of a Young Avengers movie being female-centric. I guess we'll find out in April if Nelson Peltz is successful at cleaning up shop during the next proxy fight. I actually do see the wheels turning for the first time in a good long while, and we may actually be emerging from the dark age of cinema after all. As Benny Johnson announced, it's YouTubers like me, Nerd Roddick, The Critical Drinker, the guys over at Hard Cut Reviews, and my boy from Down Under, Jesse Grant, that we're right. We are firmly on the winning side of the culture war now, and the tide seems to be turning out very quickly. It's honestly shocking to say, but I really do think that Madam Web was the catalyst for change. But what do you guys think of all this? Do you think that Sony jumped the proverbial shark by going all in on a female-centric superhero movie? And what do you guys think this means going forward? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and if you found this video useful, please do leave a like and a comment as well as subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and you can become part of this wonderful community. I'll see you in the next one.